Welcome! This video will guide you through the disassembly, repair, and reassembly of an XPD 676 series Viking pump. This series includes the following Viking pump models. As always, consult the applicable technical service manual for important safety information before you begin. A copy of the latest revision can be found on our website at vikingpump.com. When working on or around your equipment, be sure to follow the correct safety procedures. It's critical to know what liquid the pump has been handling and the precautions necessary to safely handle the liquid. Read and follow the safety warnings in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For this series of pumps, bearing kits are available. Contact your local authorized Viking pump distributor with the model and serial number of the pump to obtain this kit part number. The bearing kit includes bearings, collars, lip seals, O-rings, and associated hardware. You may require the following tools for disassembly and repair. SAE wrenches, Allen wrenches, and a soft-headed hammer. A complete listing of tools and part numbers can be found in the service manual. This pump comes standard with jacket connections on the bracket and the casing, a seal chamber port, gauge ports, bearing housing grease fitting, and drain pan connection. If flush plan or barrier fluid tubes are connected to the seal gland, turn off and disconnect before removing the seal. Remove the guard. Bend up a tang of the lock washer and then insert a brass bar or piece of plastic into the port opening and between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Using a bearing lock nut tool or spanner wrench, remove the lock nut and lock washer from the shaft. Remove the brass bar. Loosen two set screws in the face of the bearing housing and turn the bearing housing counterclockwise to remove the bearing housing assembly from the bracket. Remove the pair of half round rings under the inner spacer collar from the shaft for K through LS size pumps. There are no half round rings on all other size pumps. Remove seal plugs or connections from seal gland. Place spacer clips on seal. Loosen the set screws on the cartridge seal collar to free the cartridge seal from the shaft. Remove nuts, lock washers, and washers from seal gland. Slide the cartridge seal out through the bearing housing opening. Mark the head and casing before disassembly to ensure proper reassembly. The idler pin, which is offset in the pump head, must be positioned toward an equal distance between port connections to allow for proper flow of liquid through the pump. Remove the head cap screws or nuts. On larger pumps, jack screws should be used to back the head away from the casing. Remove the head by tilting it backward to prevent the idler from falling off the pin. The rotor and shaft assembly can now be removed from the pump. A soft-headed hammer may be required to tap on the end of the shaft for removal. Take care in removing the rotor and shaft to avoid damaging the bracket bushing. Remove the idler from pin. Remove O-ring from head. Inspect pump parts for wear, particularly critical parts such as the idler pin, idler bushing, bracket bushing, idler gear, rotor, shaft, and casing. 
Check parts for nicks, burrs, and excessive wear. Burrs left on the shaft can damage O-rings on the seal sleeve during installation, so they should be removed with a fine grade of emery cloth. Replace any worn components. Clean the rotor hub and casing bore. Make sure both are free of dirt or grit. Now the bearing housing can be disassembled. Begin by removing the spacer collars. Loosen the two radial scent screws in the flange of the bearing housing. With a spanner wrench, unscrew the outer end cap with lip seal. Remove both taper roller bearings and lip seal from the bearing housing. Remove lip seal from the outer end cap. Install the lip seal into the end cap with the lip towards the end of the shaft. For lip seal installation, a press may be used. Install the lip seal into the bearing housing with the lip towards the end of the shaft. It is possible to install the bearings incorrectly. Install with the large end of the inner races together. Pack the tapered roller bearings with grease and press or push bearings into the housing with the large end of the inner races together. Insert two nylon plugs into the holes on the threads of the bearing end cap. Install and turn the outer end cap into the bearing housing until it is tied against the inner races of the bearing and they cannot be rotated by hand. Make a mark on the outside diameter of the bearing housing and a corresponding mark on the bearing housing end cap. Measure 5 16 of an inch and make another mark on the bearing housing. Rotate the bearing housing end cap in a counterclockwise direction until the mark on the outside diameter of the bearing housing aligns with the measured mark. This will provide the correct end play for the bearings. Lock the end cap in place with two set screws in the flange of the bearing housing. Place the O-ring on the head. Coat the idler pin with light oil and install the idler onto the pin on the head. Lubricate the shaft and inner diameter of the shaft bushing. Slide the shaft assembly and rotor into the casing. Reinstall the head and idler gear. The aligning marks that were made during disassembly ensure the proper location of the pin and crescent. Tighten the head cap screws evenly per TR804 cap screw Torx. Install the tapered installation sleeve on the shaft. Make sure the shaft is free of burrs that could damage the O-rings of the seal. Coat the rotor shaft, tapered installation sleeve, and the inside of the rotor member of the seal with a generous amount of light oil. Install the seal onto the shaft, making sure it is oriented with the flush port at the 12 o'clock position. Secure the gland onto the bracket face using the proper hardware.
tighten only enough to contain leakage and not to distort the seal gland. Remove the seal installation sleeve. Slide the inner spacer collar over the shaft with the recessed end facing the head of the pump. Install the bearing housing. Install the outer bearing spacer collar. The tang of the lock washer goes into the groove of the shaft. Install the lock washer and lock nut on the shaft. Insert a length of plastic or brass through the port opening between the rotor teeth to keep the shaft from turning. Tighten the lock nut per the specified values in the lock nut torque table found in the TSM. Remove the piece of plastic or brass bar from the port opening. Tighten or loosen the bearing housing until the rotor shaft can be turned by hand with a slight noticeable drag. This point is known as the zero end clearance. Mark the position of the bearing housing with respect to the bracket. Using the measurement from the table in the technical service manual, make a second mark to the right of the first mark on the bearing housing at the specified distance. Tighten the two self-locking set screws in the outboard face of the bearing housing with equal force against the bracket. The pump end clearance is now set and locked. Be sure the shaft can rotate freely. If not, back off an additional length on the outside diameter and check again. Tighten the set screws on the cartridge seal drive collar to the shaft and remove or turn the centering clips to clear the seal drive collar. Reinstall the seal plugs or piping plan with the appropriate sealing compound into the seal gland. Reinstall guard. Reinstall the flush plan and barrier fluid lines as needed. Your Viking Pump XPD 676 series pump is fully reassembled and ready to be put back into service. If you still have any questions regarding this or other Viking Pump products, please contact your local authorized Viking Pump distributor or visit us on the web at vikingpump.com. Thank you for watching.